Today I'll give you a full walkthrough of Salesforce so that you could set up and start sending cold emails in no time. If you ever feel stuck, just come back to this video and find the chapter you need to figure out all of your problems. The first step is connecting your mailboxes. If you don't have them, I have a video on how to set up mailboxes quickly for half the price of Gmail or Outlook. You should find it linked below. Now let me show you how to connect your mailboxes. In Salesforce, click on mailboxes and add mailbox. You'll be presented with five options. First, MailForge is for those who don't have any mailboxes. Second, you have Gmail or G Suite. After you click on it, you'll have a full video and a text tutorial on how to connect your mailboxes in less than five minutes. Follow it if you want to connect Gmail or G Suite mailboxes. Third, you'll have Outlook. It's even easier than Gmail with a simple six step tutorial. If you're stuck anywhere, you can find more in depth tutorial in the help desk. Fourth, you'll be able to connect any email provider using IMAP and SMTP. Just add your first and last name and the mailbox you want to connect. Add the password, IMAP and SMTP host, and that's it. The last option is for anyone who wants to connect mailboxes in bulk. Instead of doing all of them manually, you can just add all the information into a Google Sheet, download and upload a CSV and it will all be done for you. Once you have connected your mailboxes, you can change the settings by clicking go to setting. Here you can add domain tracking, which is as easy as adding a new DNS record to your domain. You can find a more in-depth tutorial linked here. You can also change the sending limits, although I suggest keeping the recommended ones. And of course, you can edit the signature. Next step is to enable warmup. To enable warmup, simply toggle it on by clicking here. Warmup should be on for as long as you're sending emails. And you need to warm up your mailboxes for at least 14 days before sending any cold email. If you want to change any warmup settings, just click go to settings and there you'll be able to increase or decrease warmup emails or pause it entirely. You have a full breakdown of warmup emails sent, replies, and saved from spam. At the bottom, you'll find your warm-up code. You can use it to filter out warm-up emails sent to and from your mailbox. Now let's add your leads. Go to contacts and click add contacts. You can either upload a CSV or a Google Sheets URL or upload leads manually. Probably none of you will do it manually, but if you do, just add required information and click create new contact. Otherwise, just create a Google Sheet or a CSV file that looks like this sample, upload it and you're good to go. Once you upload it, you'll be able to add tags. After that's done, you can change or add custom variables, check if everything is correct, and then confirm and import. Easy as that. Before we send any emails, we had to set up our product. Click create new product and fill in the details. Be as clear as possible, because AI will use this together with buyer's data to write unique personalized emails for you. If your inputs are bad, you won't get great results. So name your product, add the industry, ICP, pain, solution, and cost of inaction. Make sure you're not adding any fluff or marketing words, trying to make it seem better than it really is. Think about how would your existing customers describe what you do, and don't rush. Take some time to brainstorm and do it diligently. If anything, just ping the support chat and people there will be happy to help you out. If you're ever stuck, just open up the help desk or hover over the question mark for an explanation and an example. You can create as many products as you need and use different ones for different sequences. Let me show you how to create those. To create a sequence, go to sequences and create new sequence. Name your sequence, select the product and language. Click Create Sequence and here you'll be able to add contacts. If you want to import new ones, click Import Contacts and follow what I told you previously. Otherwise, just click on Add Contacts and select all the contacts you want to add to the sequence. You can filter it out by tags, status, exclude certain tags or already contacted leads. Click Add Contacts and you'll have an option to validate your contacts. If you did not validate them before importing, you should not skip this process as it it's crucial if you want to have great deliverability. Click start validation process, wait for it to load, and then you'll see the status of all of your leads. 
select save leads and click next. Sequence builder is where you'll have the most settings and things you can change. Let's start with AI generated emails. Click generate with AI and you'll be asked to write a fallback template. This template is here just in case AI can generate the email or your lead doesn't have a LinkedIn or website URL. I'll showcase all the options when writing a templated email later on. So wait for that part if you want to find out more about writing templated emails. Once you finish writing your fallback email, click save fallback and then you'll be able to change the AI generated email settings. First, select the information source you want. This is the buyer's info that AI will use to craft personalized offers to your prospects. Select any tonality you like and at the bottom you'll see dynamic languages. This is an amazing feature that will translate your emails to your lead's native language. This greatly increases their reply rate. I'll show you how to add follow-ups in a second, but let's talk about AZ testing and templated emails. If you want to AZ test, simply click on add AZ testing. You can test as many variants as you want. You can test different settings for AI generated emails or AI versus templated emails or anything else you could imagine. For example, you could test a fully AI generated email versus a templated email with an AI generated icebreaker at the start versus a fully fully templated email. Let me share the settings you would want to use if you're writing templated emails. If you want to send templated emails, you can use more than 10 different subject variables simply by clicking on variables and selecting the variable you want. The same goes for custom variables. Once you write your full email copy, you should spin tax it for better deliverability. To do that, click on auto spin tax. It will spin tax most of your text. If you'd like, you can save your emails as templates for future use. To do that, just click save as template and name it. You can of course insert images, links, source code by clicking these buttons. Adding follow-ups is as easy as clicking add new step, selecting days to wait in between each follow-up and writing your follow-up. You should also spin tax your follow-ups. And if you want, you can also AZ test follow-ups as well. Once you do that, click next and you'll see a preview of AI generated emails. You can always regenerate them. If you want to change the tone or other settings, simply click back. Otherwise, just click next. Schedule is pretty self-explanatory. Select the time zone you'd like your emails to be sent in and do the same with days and time. Click next. Now you'll see a lot of settings in front of you, but don't feel overwhelmed. I'll explain everything. First, you need to select the mailboxes that you want to be used in this sequence. The more, the better. Second, you can turn on and off open rate tracking. If you're no longer A-B testing subject lines and found one that works great, you should turn this off. Because when you're tracking open rate, each email includes a little tracking link and it can hurt your deliverability. So once you find something that works, it's suggested to turn it off. Also, if you're tracking open rates, make sure you have custom domain tracking set up. It will also increase your deliverability. I mentioned how to add it previously. Link tracking is similar to open rate tracking. It just tracks link clicks. Plain text sends emails as text only. This greatly increases deliverability, but disables any tracking or HTML. Stop multi-threading on reply means that if anyone from the company you're reaching out to replies, you'll stop sending emails to anyone in that country. For example, if you're sending emails to Greg at Salesforce, Frank at Salesforce, and Simon at Salesforce, if let's say Frank replies, your follow-ups to Greg and Simon will be stopped. Native unsubscribe header, opt-out link, and text are all pretty self-explanatory. CC and BCC is something you should enable if you'd like to send a copy of the email to somebody else. CC allows you to send a carbon copy, and BCC allows you to send a blind carbon copy, which means that the recipient won't see other email addresses that the email was sent to. Pause on click simply pauses the sequence for leads that click on your emails. And pause on open does the same but with opens. If you're ready, just click launch sequence. You'll get all of your replies into one place called the prime box. There you can see all and unread emails. Once you select an email, you can of course reply to it, delete it, move it, 
forward it, push the contact to a do not contact list, or mark the email as unread. Lastly, you can add any label you like from the suggested ones or create and add your own labels. That's pretty much it. If you have any questions, please comment down below or contact support. For more valuable content on lead generation or cold email tricks, check out Salesforce channel.